Ooh, man, let me put this underneath. Okay. Okay, guys. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def okay. It's nice, nice, okay. nice. Sun is okay. Yeah. Okay. It's framed okay. Okay. Maybe just. Yeah. Yeah, just I'm just my eye, because I see these barriers. I'm I'm making it. Yeah. Okay. Our filmer over here. <laughs> okay, guys. Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while. Who am I with today? My name is Blake Ryan Murray. Blake Ryan Murray. And uh, we just met today. Um, I don't know what area. When? When? And we just met today. So uh, right now we're at. I don't think the hotel matters. I don't think it's owned by. Uh, so we're at this hotel. It is very nice. I will say that it's given me some ideas for a community, but. Uh, we've been talking uh, for a few hours now. We just had some food. We had some wali nyama, which is rice and meat. And uh, now we're going to get into a bit of an interview. Uh, but I will say we discussed a lot before this. So, uh, yeah, Blake. Blake from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, but raised in Atlanta, specifically Decatur, East Atlanta, most of East Atlanta. Okay, so uh, through our conversation, I found out you've actually been in Africa, not just Tanzania. Well, first, let me ask you, how long have you been in Tanzania? A year, almost a year. Now. Almost a year. So we're in the same situation. But how long have you been in Africa? Almost eight years. Eight years. And where were you before Tanzania? Before Tanzania, I was in South Africa for five, six years there. Wow. And then before there, Botswana. Uh, I originally landed in Africa due to a tennis post or position in a, in a city called Francistown, which is in Botswana. And then eventually a lot of people guided me towards bigger cities. So I went to Abarone, which is a big city in Botswana, wow. and then shifted to Johannesburg, which I spent most of my time in Africa. Wow. Okay. And um, I guess I should ask, what were you doing? For those basically eight years. Yeah, well, so I have a brand, and the main mission behind it is to develop the youth into productive leadership. Before it became a for-profit for business, it was a non-profit business called FTYT for the Youth Tennis, and then it evolved to Food Academy. So, developing our kids spiritually, mentally, physically—that's the main work I've been doing since I landed and before I landed since 2008, even prior to that at the Boys and Girls Club teaching kids football, you know, like flag football, basketball. So I've been teaching since I was a teenager. Wow. And I'm going to say this, just a little side note. He's wearing, a, what is this, traditional Ghana? Yeah, Kente. Kente. And I'm wearing Kitenge. And yeah. this is a coincidence. We both came in our, yeah. in our uh, cultural wear, if you will. Yeah. And this is my new, whatever the tailor just made. Yeah. And uh, I like it. I'm going to have to get one of these. But uh, yeah, we were we were. Uh, no problem. And uh, someone did these collars, nice. It's yeah. a nice touch. I've never seen a collar. I had him do a special design. Oh, just, you designed. It. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so now, anytime he makes my shirt, he's like, "You want a normal collar, or oh, you want your collar?" Okay. My collar. Okay. So yeah. I'm like, it has to be unique. This folds three times. Right. Okay. Um. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I should ask you, because we, we discussed some of your goals for Tanzania. Right. What are your thoughts, I'll ask this first, what are your thoughts on being in Tanzania so far? Because you made a comparison, and yeah. I think it was really interesting. Oh, okay. Well, um, I mean, it, all of it is Africa. Um, but specifically here in Tanzania, I feel like because certain policies weren't implemented or were implemented, however you want to look at it, they didn't really have a stop to the economic pace. So for people who are business minded, uh, Tanzania is a, a market where you can access a lot of opportunity if you have the capacity to do so. Not just the capital, but the know-how, because I've seen people here buy up a lot of land 
and then they go back to wherever they came from and then they don't put anything on it so then because they don't have the capacity to know that in real estate if you don't build something on it then it goes back to the community yeah. per village law per Tanzanian law they can take the land back so yeah. you can have the money and do other things but capacity is key so I feel like if you have the capacity here then you, you have a lot more promise anywhere you're going to go in Africa you're going to have your challenges as far as legal and business and all that but here I feel like the potential for growth for whatever you want to do it's it's just a bit higher just because of what has happened in our recent past and how this country you know, okay and should I tell them about the okay okay yeah, I think um, yeah, yeah. and again guys we talked about a lot of things but one of the things that really caught my ear was the the production you had in mind. Yeah. So you were thinking about doing a, some sort of movie production to sort of change the narrative, to shift right. the narrative, a really well put together, and maybe you can tell us more Yeah, about so that. one of the concepts that I was really pushing while I was in South Africa, I was working with different producers and production companies. One of them is Connect TV. They do Our Perfect Wedding, a lot of South African shows, but anyways, the one that I was pitching to them is called Black Anxiety. And it's, uh, it's something to kind of bring together all black people's, colored people, original people's stories and say and show people how how much anxiety we have that's purely fear-based. Yeah. Meaning, for my acronym, false evidence appearing real. So for instance, if I, uh, we were talking about Lucky Dubé, yeah. he ended up dying because they mistaken him for another, let's say, tribe or nation. Yeah. Right? So, uh, I want to create a film that kind of like Crash did, that movie, yeah. I don't know if anybody if you watched that movie Crash, get people to think a bit different about is the anxiety warranted or is it not warranted? And from my experience, all of the anxiety that I had about Africa and us as a people and things like that, it was never warranted. Most of the things I was fearing never happened. Like going to a village and someone kidnapping you, you or something you know like that stuff's not yeah. real so giving people the, the families the whole concept is to have the actors play a role that is not their tribe or their nation so having a south african woman who is in the bailey be having to learn the culture of a skooma from tanzania wow. and speak the language of skooma was game show. the culture you understand so now yeah. they're having to embrace the culture that is quote unquote not theirs as the actors themselves. So they're gonna have their own type of experience saying, okay, I'm Zulu, but I'm gonna learn about my Kosa sisters there. And what do they do there as Kosa? Well, I'm Sutu, but I'm gonna learn, you know, what do Igbo wow. do in, in Nigeria? So there's characters that are written and that they're from some type of caste or some tribe or whatever, but the person playing the actual character is not of that caste. So I would, if I was in the film, I'd be playing a Zimbabwean guy who is shown so I can learn that culture. So now the, the actors are bridging the gaps and the film is to bridge the gap amongst people in general and see if all of the anxieties that we have, once you understand each person's storyline behind why they do everything, whatever, is it really warranted? Mm -hmm. So wow. they, it'll answer that question. And that's a very clever concept because again, when we as diaspora come to Tanzania or anywhere, right. that's exactly what we're doing. Right. We're trying to become an acquiescent culture. Yes. Given that it is still our culture as Africans, right. you know, African before Tanzanian right. and African before African American. Yes. And you know, that's what we're doing. So to well, see African it on the big before there was humans. Before there was humans. We're the original. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> but you think about it like this. Um, Actually, no, I'm going to go into this question. Okay. Now, you said you've been in Africa for eight years. What caused you to leave Atlanta and come to, um, where was it, uh, Ghana, right? Yes, well, it was, it was something that I envisioned at a very early age. Um, so it had to come to be is the short answer. But the other answers are just, I'm an explorer, I'm a traveler, I'm free to travel. I feel where I want to travel. And I wanted to come to Africa, specifically Botswana there, because I did extensive research too. So I did at least seven years of research 
to the point where people who I was quoting all my research about Africa, they was like, why don't you just go to Africa? You always talk about Africa, like my friends from Atlanta, like, well, you always talk about, hey, why don't you just go? And they didn't think I would go. Huh. And so I went and it was like, I had a send off party. And since then, uh, you know, but before that I went to Panama and a lot of, of the diaspora comes to Africa, but I, I went to Panama and felt just as human as I feel here in Africa. Wow. Uh, it's just being outside of the state. Right, just being outside of the states made me understand when I first traveled to Panama. Hola. So we were talking about the movie, isn't it? I don't even know. I we're back. So. Yeah. <laughs> we just had an interesting conversation and it was it was nice. It was it, it wasn't anything bad. Yeah. But yeah, he, he did disrupt the video a little. But. He just wanted to hit you coming. Yeah, he just wanted to say, hey, 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 hey. I'm like, go, man, go, go, go. But uh, no, um, um, just to get back into the question, uh, you were describing this film? Oh yeah, the film, yeah. So, we're, I think that's where we left off. So, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but we can start there. But the film is Black Anxiety. Uh, hopefully, we'll shoot it sometime soon. Your partner get some funding with us. Uh -huh. I'd yeah. love. Yeah, let's do it. So, yeah, and but up the the channel is called Star TV. The whole premise behind that is giving a platform to the youth. Because as I've been going through these countries, yes, I do teaching, but I also when I'm teaching the kids, not everyone wants to do sports. Some of them yeah. are creative. Some of them want to do business. Some of them want to do science. So I created Star to kind of highlight that. But most of the people want to do music so it turned into a lot of music videos and interviews and all that uh, but I'm just here to support the youth you know? that's, that's the main thing I can't be mad at that yeah. as long as you know it's us teaching us right. because you know we have a situation in our community yeah. but we're not being taught by people in our community right. and so even if what they're teaching is right it's not being taught by someone who represents them right. so there's gonna always be this inferiority complex right and it's so subliminal subconscious right you see that the person who gives you the knowledge to do good in life is, doesn't look like you. Right. Even if you believe you're successful, you're going to always believe they're more successful. Right. For the most part. So no, we need us to teach us, right. black to teach black. And, and, and I don't want to sound like a separation person, but really that's all it is. It's representation. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. And, and children need that. Yeah. You don't have to be a doctor, psychologist psychiatrist you don't have to be any of that to know children need representation something that represents them will help them grow fast or better but you know what self-image you know how do we perceive ourselves how do we perceive our community and right now it's not great unfortunately so that's why the movie black anxiety is going to do something to shift perspectives and uh, be a solution to these challenges i think i want to film a movie you know, we were talking about this. So and I, executive producers now, it's fine. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I think I mean, we need a film company because this one movie, uh, we need a lot of it. Okay. I'm thinking, you know, again, that's an investment opportunity for guys for that want to get involved in something. Right. Big not time. Yours, right? you know. Big time. The, 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 the media industry as a whole, not just Tanzania, but my connection to South Africa, Botswana, they all are star for... Uh, People from our background to hear our stories and tell our stories and collab with them yeah. stories. Not just the industry, but people outside the industry or people in the industry who want to do things that are outside the industry, they're there. And it's just about us presenting it, packaging it the right way and everything. Let's get together, change the narrative. Or really, let's get together and, and create a, 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 a film studio or something. Yeah. That's not a high investment sort of thing, yeah. but it, I mean, okay, it can. But really, it's not really, not really. It's just mostly equipment. But starting out, it can be just for it acting. Works. You can do acting. Yeah. So in, in Bayer, these people have no money, and they have an acting studio. If you want to call it or a film I studio? You think and we can go one? Yeah, yeah. And we still gotta go. To they the don't home. even have any any uh, what do you call it? budget. <laughs> it's just passion. They do it they for act. passion and they act, they practice and they're waiting for someone like us to come and say, oh, let's put you in a film. And these are people who like pull off things that from an acting 
my minimal acting experience is really tough stuff like crying on point wow. uh, being able to engage and having the look polishing themselves they're, they're ready to wow. be put there it's just about us putting them there having it be able to re relate to people in every talk they look like they're being destroyed, some of them, but look at how nice. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah. you know, this is the that's community we want to build. Yeah. You know, something like this. Thatch roofing. Yeah. So thatch, thatch is an old roofing solution that's been around for so many years. Yeah, but they have to replace it. Hey, you have to. But still, you have to maintain it. I will say this. You know, and I think we're going to close up pretty soon. You know, we're going to be talking off camera. We're going to be collaborating behind the scenes. And I think you guys are going to see more of him. You have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, it's Star TV. Star, the Star, like yes, hungry. Like I'm hungry. Star, Star TV. TV. And that's where you'll see the youth and who we uh, we work with, and I engage with and had to come with because you can't. Uh, I'm not gonna say you can't. It's hard to be that image for the let's say positive role model for the kids if the only thing you can do is judge them. Yeah, but if you a, can be with them and do the things they're doing and hang out at the place that they're hanging out and be relatable to them, that's what you're going to see me doing. Although my message and my lyrics are different, so I'm basically putting a disclaimer out to say that don't judge our youth. Watch Star TV and know that it's a platform for the youth to express themselves as it is. That's so, yeah. well, right. the big problem we have. We keep judging them. Okay. Older generation has a problem with the youth. But they created it. Yeah, right? we are responsible for their problem. Yeah. But you know what, guys? Again, we're going to be collaborating. I want to go to that film studio. Maybe we'll give them a good tour of that because that's business for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But there's going to be more of him in the future, I hope. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and we're going to be collaborating behind the scenes. And we're going to put something together, you know? Um, I'm saying it here. Where is Bun? That's a perfect. <laughs> And uh, you guys, uh, his link to his YouTube channel is going to be in the description. Um, thank you guys for watching. I don't know what to say. It's a good day. It's a good day. You want to say anything to me? No, you're welcome. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Karibu nubani. That means you are welcome home. And yeah, that's it. Come on home. Goodbye, y'all. And cut.